But you know, instead of just looking at a housing market as a standalone, how about you know, and sh you know, minimum wages and say a retirement income for say people above seventy, wouldn't this be a more direct way of addressing retirement adequacy? You know, ensuring that people have enough to save. Now, I, now, now, gentleman Kevin made a good point. Why don't we address, you know, pension adequacy problems more directly, with with pension subsidies? With, with, with direct subsidies to the poor. My point is, we need both. If you look at, if you look at, at, if you look at, 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 this is only one half of the pension adequacy story. Okay, so in the World Bank scheme, capitalizing real estate is one pillar of retirement adequacy. The other pillars of retirement adequacy are your private savings, your state pension, and your and your part-time work. So the, these are the four pillars. That we're, very, we're only talking about one pillar here. If we want to talk about real pension adequacy for Singaporeans, we also have to talk about CPF reform. <laughs> we also have to talk about adequacy of the silver support scheme, the non-contributory pension for the poor. Just because we have it does, it, does it obviate the need for a high silver support scheme? Pay? No, you probably need both, right? So this is only one quarter of the story, one half of the story, but it is a big component because for the bottom 50%, it forms 75 to 90%, currently 90% of the pension assets. 